on my better days, I'm an artist. You may have even seen some of my murals. I've also been a teacher, so you may know me because I helped your child get into their dream arts college. But depending on the year, you may not have known I was shooting heroin on my lunch break. Helping create eccentric community fundraisers were some of my prouder moments. And those achievements really didn't seem possible without my secret weapon, coffee. No, just kidding, it was heroin. <laughs> you see, in around 2006, I fell in love with Jason Dryden, a man who could teach 10 kids to throw pottery on the wheel at the same time. He could play three instruments at once, a guy who seemed to be able to do anything and was right about everything including that I'd like using heroin with him. And one night, we laid in the grass, looking up at the stars, and he told me that I would be the last woman he would ever love. And he was right about that, too, because in 2010, my soulmate died on the floor of our bedroom of an overdose. And after I lost Jay, it seemed all I had left was my best friend, heroin, until art saved me. Because thanks to my connection to art, I've been heroin-free over six years. And even when I decided to get clean, it wasn't because I was hopeful about this future I was sure I had destroyed. I had no willpower. I got pregnant. And as my life was just crashing further around me, it caused more shame, which meant more lying. And I didn't get clean till I was eight months pregnant and then saw a doctor. And I knew those I loved deserved better, especially my daughters, but I didn't know a life without my best friend, my warm blanket. So my plan was to have my new daughter, breastfeed her to health, and do all of those I loved a favor, and we'll check out early, so to speak. Luckily, Lillian was born healthy, and as I kept with my promise of keeping her fed, I would begin to sketch while I was up at night. And these sketches were as raw as those receptors reawakening in my brain. And my vessel had been destroyed. And I just I couldn't create with that same momentum I had once had before, so I had to learn to eat healthy and exercise, all so I could create. But what I didn't realize at the time was this was the lock and key to my brain, all of my happy chemicals. Actually, any artistic connection is going to release one to four of the happy neurological chemicals that our vessels crave for survival. But as a society, we're numbing ourselves. We're numbing the good with the bad. And this heroin epidemic that we have all experienced in one way or another is just part of this cycle. Even our county coroner says that once this epidemic is over, there's going to be another, just as there was before, unless we fix the societal issues that are causing this. One in four Americans, so we'll shrink it down, a quarter of this audience, are on antidepressants. We keep doubling down on these same solutions to our sadness while the cycle keeps growing. I think we deserve some new solutions. And just a little reflection for those of you who feel you can't benefit from art because you find yourself in the I can't draw a stick figure category which is actually really difficult because perfect circles, straight lines, I don't know anyone who can do that. But nevertheless, picture that song you play on repeat after a breakup. You didn't have to play the instruments to create that moment. Or the simplicity of your favorite mug, warm and familiar in your palms. You didn't have to create it. But it's all about those joyful neurological chemicals that the art will release within you. In 2015, I got to paint a heroin overdose memorial mural, and I asked friends to get the giant wall started with me. A friend had brought her brother, Matt, and she seemed so eager for him to help paint, and he had asked why I was doing all of this. So I shared a bit of my story, and that art is my addiction. And on 
I'll never forget the way he looked up at me with this relief in his voice, saying, me too. Art is my addiction too. Now, Matt asks to help paint almost every day, but we started the mural in November, so eventually cold turned to frozen. And well, we had to take a few weeks off in January. That's when my new friend Matt relapsed and overdosed. I wish I would have known the weight of his words. Art is my addiction too. His sister told me how much that experience meant to him, so now he's amongst the poppies, forever painting, next to my soulmate. And I understood why Matt went back to his old lover of heroin. It releases oxytocin, which is the same chemical released during true love or a mother's hug. We users like to call it the mother's womb or the warm blanket. And it is this chemical bond that makes it so much more difficult to kick these opioids than other drugs. We actually have four of these neurological chemicals responsible for our joy. There is endorphins, serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin. Now, those last three happen when you connect with your artwork or with someone else's. But that first one, endorphins. It happens when we make physically stimulating artwork, like art that requires you to carry lots of gallons of paint, or climb stories of scaffolding, like in public art. And it's this physical connection that is just crucial to our individual as well as our societal recovery. We all want to leave our mark, and public art contributes to that while changing our environment. My partner once told me that if I just want to connect with artists to paint for galleries, but if I want to connect with everyone to go where they all go, he was right. We were painting this abandoned kiddie pool. It had been littered with broken glass. And neighbors saw our efforts and decided to join. One neighbor brought his three-year-old to the park every day. And after being inspired to help us, he asked what we were going to do with the picnic shelter nearby. I got to tell him it would be flowers, each representing someone who had lost their battle with addiction or who had won it and was in recovery. All one big garden growing together. Which is when he asked me for a tiger lily for himself, because He'd been clean since his daughter was born. And we had over 70 people ask for flowers, numerous people from the recovery community or just the neighborhood come to help paint. Then there was this other mural. We had a woman come on a community day to help, but then she kept coming back. She's 24 years in recovery, and she has a whole career helping others. But as she painted, she shared with me, with tears in her eyes, that making her mark on that wall had her feel hopeful, like she was creating real change that she could see. And then there's, well, my dress. <laughs> it's made by a seamstress named Tracy, who was inspired by our street art. It's actually made from the drop cloth from the overdose mural that Matt helped paint. Yeah, it's very nice, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> and uh, when I shared with Tracy my desire to wear her dress and the purpose of my talk, she let me know that before sewing, she would drink a gallon of beer a night. But because of her connection to her work, she now doesn't need that gallon of beer to be happy because art is her addiction too. Addiction is just a byproduct of our country's sadness. We're disconnected with each other and with ourselves. And in the words of researcher Johan Hari, the opposite of addiction is not sobriety, but connection. So thank you for connecting with me.